Welcome to the HyperX Academy. Today's tutorial is the third and final installation involving FEM imports, structures, and how to transition from the FEM world to a HyperX environment. Prior to structure assignment, elements and properties exist as unused FEM. To officially transition from FEM world to the HyperX environment, you must first select the elements and properties you wish to add to your structure. To understand how to create a structure, please see our video that covers structure creation. Once a selection of elements or properties in the unused FEM is added to a structure, these entities become officially part of the HyperX database. Often, a program may have specific organizational schemes within their finite element model. For consistency and overall clarity of communication, it can be beneficial to incorporate that organization into the structure creation process. If your model is organized by include files, it can be useful to view the FEM tree in terms of an include view as shown. In this example, by clicking on the AeroShell lower node, all the elements from the AeroShell lower include file are selected. A structure can now be quickly created using the right click menu as shown. HyperX will also recognize element sets, typically invoked with the Nastran LSET command. Each element set corresponds to a node on the tree, which can then be selected or isolated. The HyperMesh preprocessor will export comments containing information on the components and assemblies belonging to a particular model. HyperX will recognize these entities as FEM tree nodes and selectable items as well. If you'd like, you can even highlight your entire model and create structures organized by the include files from your FEM import. Here are a few general guidelines on what this means for the user. First, all selected beams or shell properties are converted to HyperX zones. All connector elements are converted to HyperX joints, either by an element by element basis or a property by property basis. Second, all zones and joints are listed in the structure tree beneath their structure and their corresponding mesh lines now appear black rather than pink in the viewport. Third, any entity and a structure is ready to be set up for analysis and sizing. This means only zones and joints, not unused FEM, can receive design, load, and analysis property assignment. For each individual zone, all of the following operations occur upon adding them to a structure. The buckling span of each zone, which is based on the FEM-defined element size, is automatically calculated upon placing that property into a structure. The resulting buckling span can be visually verified by plotting them in the viewport by navigating to the View tab of the ribbon and selecting Buckling Spans as shown. These spans can be numerically verified or manually edited in the buckling section of the panel settings form once the property is assigned to a structure. Only the FEA loads resulting from the elements and structures will be imported into the database for sizing and analysis. When loads for these zones are imported, all element forces and moment orientations are transformed from the element normal axis to the material axis. The matrices for these transformations are defined by the angle theta in the example image taken for C quad elements. HyperX will automatically assign a reference plane, that is, the plane upon which the stiffness and loads are formulated during sizing and analysis, and offsets based on the assumed FEM reference plane. Thanks for stopping by the HyperX Academy, and we will see you in the next tutorial.